right, my friends, J.R. Dukes here. Thanks for joining me. Did you have a chance to see that Republican debate last night? It was the second Republican debate, and of course, the main star, if you will, Donald Trump, was not even there. He was a no-show, which, of course, he's taken a lot of heat for. However, if you're that far ahead in the polls, why would you show up? I sure wouldn't show up. I want to get right into it, though, because today I have this clip from Fox News that I think uh, we'll watch together, and I'll make some comments on in the meantime, our producers were up all night long. They put together a montage. Here you've got some of the feistiest exchanges between the seven on the stage last night out west. Watch. We need to win elections. And part of how we win elections is reaching the next generation of young Americans where they are. So when I get into office, I've been very clear. Kids under the age of social, under the age of 16, should not be using addictive social media. This is infuriating. Man, addictive social media under age 16. I like Vic, but I'm going to tell you something. What is he talking about? What kind of world does he think we're going to live in in the future? We're living in that world now, and it's only going to become more and more dependent upon social media, upon technology, upon AI. And he wants to ban children, individuals 16 and under, from using social media you have to be kidding me and i don't want to hear this that nikki's about to go into pertaining to the fact that TikTok may or may not be owned or controlled by the chinese machine i don't care if people are free in our country we should be free to use what we want to use the government is already not using TikTok on their computers and that's fine by me but as americans as freedom loving people we have the right to use whatever we want to use and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Because TikTok is one of the most dangerous social media apps yes, that is. we could have. And what you've got, I honestly, every time I hear you, I feel a little bit dumber for what you say. Last debate, he said we were all bought and paid for. And I thought about that for a little while and said, you know, I can't imagine how you could say that knowing that you were just in business with the Chinese Communist Party and the same people that funded Hunter Biden millions of dollars was a partner of yours as well. You know what I did with my first company? We opened a subsidiary in China. But you know what I did that was different than every other company? We got the hell out of there. Ron DeSantis is against fracking. He's against drilling. He's been against, you did it. Every He always talks about what happens on day one. You better watch out because what happens on day two is when you're in trouble. That's just wrong and let's just get real here. My plan will get the job done. Talk about someone who has never seen a federal dollar she doesn't like. 10 cents on this gallon in South Carolina as the UN ambassador, you literally Bring it, put $50,000 on curtains <laughs> in a $15 million subsidized location. Next. You got bad information. They were there before I even showed up at the residence. And Lord. This is uh, definitely one thing I did not like about the debate is that it was a lot of screaming, a lot of back and forth. They're going to have to do something different if they're going to continue with these debates. And frankly, I'm not sure why they're even debating. Uh, definitely the Republicans, it, it's no contest. Donald Trump is 40, 50, 55 points ahead of his nearest competition. I'm not sure why they're even having the debates. They should not be fighting each other. They should be fighting and going after Joe Biden. That is who we need to defeat coming up next year, not this inner fighting between each other. And another thing you're going to notice about this debate is at no time did they ever really address the economy. And the economy is always, always the single most important issue in any type of election with the small caveat of abortion, as I've discussed in previous videos, how that has affected the last election in 2022. So uh, be sure to see my other video if you're interested in checking on that. But at any rate, I'm not sure what, what they're doing there. I'm not sure what they're going to do to control that screaming and yelling back and forth. Maybe they need to start turning off the mic. I'm not sure, but something clearly has to be done. So uh, let's get right back into it. She was what right. A way to uh, really, yeah, I mean, bring it, Tim. I mean, that, that really <laughs> tells you uh, what the debate was about last night. There were a, a few debate moments that were big. Um, I, I got to say, there was some policy talk talked about Burgum, who I don't know a lot about, had some moments where I was like, you know what? Yeah. Uh -huh. If it were a different time, this guy would have gotten more oxygen. 
But we're just in such a polarizing time right now. Donald Trump obviously takes up a lot of the oxygen. You got Ron DeSantis, who has his record as the governor. You got Nikki Haley, who is probably the foreign policy establishment candidate in the race. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think what we're going to see, and we, the RNC hasn't released what the rules are going to be for the next debate. But I think that it's going to be a coalescing. They're one going to see Nikki Haley. They're probably going to see more Ron DeSantis. They're probably going to want to see Vivek Ramaswamy, who is the, the, the younger version of Donald Trump, hasn't endorsed the president, but likes the, likes the former president. And I think more people just want the main character so they can figure out who's going to be the Trump alternative. Um, but again, not enough time to really hear them dive into those specific right. policy points. I think that's the point, Lawrence, because with seven people on the stage last time, remember at this point, I think we had two stages. We had one and two, about 14 people. So we're lucky to have seven at this point, but it makes it really tough. And desperate candidates with so much on the line, and, and you know, obviously it's their goal, uh, they're going to go out there and they just kept talking. The thing that struck me, this is the time, sometimes you cross talk and then you have to pull back. They know, yeah. Nobody was pulling back. No. They were just going on and on and on until no. it was deafening. And then you and say to yourself... be the last one talking, right? Right. And then, then, then you say to yourself, am I, am I screwing up by not jumping in here? But you saw one side of the stage not do that. Did you Me notice how they went after each other? And, and I was doing some fact-checking this, this morning to find out what was correct and what wasn't. Because Chris, Chris, Christie said that Donald Trump, he only built 52 miles of the wall. And he said if Mexico, they might have paid for it if they had known it was only going to be 52 miles. Okay. And then, <laughs> then Mike Pence said, no, I was there during that period. We built hundreds of miles of the border wall. And I negotiated the remain in Mexico. And then uh, Nikki Haley was calling out... Uh, DeSantis for being against fracking. And if you read articles, PolitiFact says when DeSantis ran in 2018, he did campaign on banning hydraulic fracking and oil drilling off of the coast of Florida. Right. But he opposes fracking out there in the water off the coast, but not everywhere else. And he kept saying, that's not true. That's not right, true. Right. And a couple of fact checks, the New York Times took that on. Mm -hmm. First off, uh, you're right about the wall. Uh, so they, Chris Christie has to stop saying it. Because 52 miles is a new wall, but even the New York Times says it's 458 miles, including secondary yeah. barriers. He says much is re of replacement barriers, it's true, but there's no comparison between old railroad ties, which you... Yeah, with Chris Christie, I'm not sure what is going on with this guy. He used to literally have his head up Donald Trump's you-know-what constantly, especially at the beginning of the 2016 race. If you remember back then, Chris Christie was essentially mirroring Donald Trump everywhere. At first, Chris Christie was clearly one of the earliest supporters of Donald Trump and was throwing his entire, I don't want to say weight, because I don't want to make a joke about it, but he was. He was throwing his entire future behind Donald Trump. And I think what has happened, this is just my personal opinion, I think the Trump administration, Donald Trump, never offered him the VP position, never offered him an important position in the cabinet. And I personally think Chris Christie has an axe to grind, because if you listen to him on ABC News, on Good Morning America, every morning when he's on there or whenever they have him on, clearly this individual has an axe to grind. He did a complete 180 when it comes to President Trump, and I have to wonder why. I know why, because he has an axe to grind. And you talk about a rhino, Republican in name only, Chris Christie is that guy. I don't know what is going on with this man. He thinks he's funny. He's given false information at the debate, saying that only 50 or 50-some 50 miles of fence was built under Donald Trump. That's clearly false. There was hundreds of miles of fence that was built on the border between Mexico and the United States. So, Chris, you got to get your facts right. You are wrong, and you need to stop doing that. It's not fair. Step over and 30-foot-high ballards. So I think that's a Democratic talking point that Chris Christie should drop on at this point because it's just not true. And if you talk to the Border Patrol, they are so thankful to have the 30-foot barriers, and they look wistfully at the piles of metal that, Joe, that we paid for that that's Joe right. Biden... Is did telling you, did you read anything about, is it true that Trump added $7 trillion in national debt? Chris Christie It is right, it's a little that bit more. Uh, it is a little bit more, but it's also kind of crazy to add in the pandemic money when you told for the first time in history the country to stop working right. and we will right. pay you not to work. So that was a real outlier. Yeah, it was and, indeed. And, and yeah, what they're talking about there is that uh, they were really 
a lot of the candidates was really hammering President Trump on the fact that the deficit increased by trillions and trillions of dollars under President Trump's watch. However, they are not telling the complete truth because you had what we refer to as an outlier. What was the outlier? You may remember the outlier. The outlier was COVID-19. You had the entire country shutting down, which of course is another subject we can talk about, was wrong, wrong, wrong. But at any rate, you had the whole country shutting down. You had us all sitting at home on our backsides, waiting to collect government checks. So of course, when the government is giving everybody cash, to quote unquote, save us all and to help us get through this serious crisis of COVID, this is exactly what transpired and what happened. And the result, of course, is deficits and deficit spending and increased deficits. I'm not saying it's right, but you have to take that into consideration. You want to talk about increasing the budget or increasing the deficit, I'll tell you what increases the deficit is somebody like President Biden, who as soon as he gets into office, what does he do? He essentially kills our oil and gas industry. We have enough oil and gas that we can pump it out of the ground and use that money that we get from our own gas to pay down and pay off our deficit. We are a very, very wealthy country here in the United States. No country has been blessed more than our country. God obviously has the United States in a special category and loves us all very much. It's really difficult to look at our country and not see the good. Okay, so let's get right back into it and let's continue our little news clip here. Joe Biden has just over $5 trillion already and no pandemic and a recovering economy and a vaccine. Right, and one of the other things, uh, one policy, when we look at the polls, the number one issue with everybody in the United States seems to be the economy, inflation, stuff like that. And you know, Bidenomics should have been a punching bag last night. It should have been a pinata. And for the yeah, most part- Not a lot they, of talk about No, it. there was not a lot of talk about right. the economy. And I, I'm sure they're popping champagne corks at the White House. It's like, well, Bidenomics, we, we got a pass last night. And in fact, I read some of the comments that uh, Mark Penn made. Uh, he had been Hillary Clinton's pollster uh, over on foxnews.com. And he said, uh, they got a pass. Uh, they did well. The winner was uh, 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 Joe Biden, some have said on the political left. But when it comes to something that we didn't see in the first debate that we saw last night was uh, the seven on stage last night actually went after, a, a couple of them did, went after Donald Trump. And that is one of the, thing that, one of the things that uh, we've seen Chris Christie do, but we haven't seen Ron DeSantis do it. His donors, his backers have been pushing him to do it. Here are the two governors, DeSantis and Christie, Christie, of course, former in uh, the great state of New Jersey, going after the former president of the United States. Joe Biden, he's completely missing in action from leadership. And you know who else is missing in action? Donald Trump is missing in action. He should be on this stage tonight. He should be here explaining his comments to try to say that pro-life protections are somehow a terrible thing. I want him to look into the eyes and tell people who've been fighting this fight for a long time. Donald Trump he hides behind the walls of his golf clubs and won't show up here to answer questions like all the rest of us are up here to answer. He put seven trillion on the debt. He should be in this room. Donald, I know you're watching. You can't help yourself. I know you're watching, okay? And you're not here tonight, not because of polls and not because of your indictments. You're not here tonight because you're afraid of being on the <laughs> stage and defending your record. You're ducking these things. And let me tell you what's gonna happen. You keep doing that, no one up here is gonna call you Donald Trump anymore. We're gonna call you Donald Duck. Yeah. That All right, so he's trying to be the uh, the comedian, if you will. And uh, it's it's really sad. It's hilarious to me, but you got to point out the obvious. First of all, if any of these candidates were being obvious, uh, were being honest with the American people, they would tell you directly if the roles were reversed and they were the incumbent president ahead by 50, 55 points, whatever, no way would they be on that debate stage. There's no reason for the president to be on the debate stage. Why, why would you go? You show up and you let all these other seven people start taking pot shots at you. There's no reason for that. They should not have these debates anymore. We should simply all come around Donald Trump 
focus on Donald Trump, focus on helping him, helping him win so that he can help us, so he can get our country back on the right track and put a stop to this wokeness, put a stop to this crazy spending, put a stop to all this nonsense. It has to stop now, and only we can stop it. We have to reach out to one another, like I'm trying to do with this video, explain to people what's going on, and make sure we all show up to vote. That's really the key. As far as Chris Christie goes, he's always trying to make a joke. He's always trying to attack Donald Trump. As I talked about earlier, he has an axe to grind, in my opinion, with Donald Trump. So he thinks he's funny by coming out with this uh, Donald Duck, like he's ducking the debate. Well, uh, Donald Trump had a statement about that, and I'll go ahead and share it with you. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was interesting. He said, anybody that would come up with that nickname shouldn't be running for president. I love it. I love it. You got to say one thing about our former president. He's very intelligent, very smart. As I've talked about in previous videos, I think you're looking at Donald Trump 2.0. Donald Trump 2.0. He's refined. He's on message. He's less angry. He's not taking the bait that the legacy media is trying to feed him all the time. I am really, really impressed with him. And no matter what Ron DeSantis was saying, Donald Trump has it right on this abortion issue. He is trying to be a mediator. He's trying to be in the middle. He is not trying to be extreme on one side or the other. And if we do not go down the path that Donald Trump is trying to take us down in relation to the abortion issue, I promise you we may have a very sad outcome next year. If you don't believe me, look back at the election in 2022. The Republicans should have done a hell of a lot better than they did, and they did not. And the reason is because people showed up, women in particular, they were mad. They were upset, and in my opinion, rightly so. People, the majority, I think the statistic I shared with you last time was 85% of Americans, 85% of America does not want an absolute ban on abortion. 85% of Americans want some restrictions on abortion, but they, generally speaking, want a woman to have access to an abortion service if that's what she wants. It varies in that 85%, but 85%, that's a big number. And if you don't take heed and you start listening to Ron DeSantis on this issue, you're going to lose. It's just that simple. Hey, I appreciate you joining me today. If you like my content, if you like the type of videos I produce, please hit the thumbs up button. Please subscribe, share, comment below. I love you. I thank you for joining me. It humbles me, and I'm appreciative of the fact that you would join and listen to what I have to say. Coming to you from beautiful Zephyr Hills, Florida, I am J.R. Dukes. If you like these type of videos, please like, share, comment. I love to hear from you. You can always reach me directly at reachjrdukes at gmail.com. That's reachjrdukes at gmail.com. It has been my pleasure. Thank you for being with me today.